And so it can be a very anxiety inducing job to have when you're, again, you paying your bills, you maintaining the lifestyle that you begin building for yourself is reliant on you staying relevant. What's good, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about content creation and just some things that I wish I would have known before I jumped into this as a full time content creator when it comes to making money. Now that I've been doing this for a little bit longer, there's definitely some things that I've learned that I don't think a lot of people talk about. So I want to be very open and transparent in this video with you guys and just kind of share everything. So the first thing I kind of want to touch on is where I'm at in terms of my personal career with influencing. And I used to be someone who was like, if you guys watch my channel from like back in the day, I used to be very open about how much money I made. I was like, I don't really care. Like might as well just tell you guys, especially when I was first starting out as a content creator. But now that I'm starting to make more money, and I think it's also just like the older that I'm getting, the more I'm starting to realize the benefit in being private about how much money you make, not just because I wanna hide it from you guys, it's really more just like in my personal life knowing that I have people know how much money I make just is a little bit uncomfortable. And also like, I feel like there's a lot of risk that can come with sharing how much you make when you are working for yourself in this industry in particular because it varies it's gonna look different for everyone and it's unfortunate but like brands will pay you the bare minimum that they can and so i feel like by me sharing how much money i'm making it kind of opens up the door for brands to lowball me even more than they already kind of do sometimes which we all know like being an influencer especially being a black influencer it's like brands will lowball you as much as they possibly can so that all to say, I apologize. I'm not going to share how much money I made exactly in 2022, but I will say I, I definitely made six figures. Um, I made more money than I thought that I would ever be making at this age in my life. Like we all know by now, social media is a very lucrative career. Like, especially as a YouTuber, you're going to make a good amount of money once you grow your audience to a certain size. And brand deals is my biggest source of income. The second source of the second biggest source of income for me is my AdSense revenue. So the ads that you guys see on this video, I do make money from doing that, from having them. Um, and so that does make me a good amount of money every single month. And then I also make money from affiliate marketing and also I have an ebook. So having a paid product or any kind of like good or service associated with you and your personal brand is of course going to be able to make you money. Um, if you decide to kind of build that out. So one of the first things I really want to touch on is brand deals, because this is how most Im influencers make a majority of their money, unless they've built out a brand again, where they're selling like goods or services. Most influencers are making like influencing content creation is so lucrative because you can work with however many brands you want usually and make a good amount of money each month from working with brands so one question i tend to get a lot is how much i charge for brand deals and this is something that i think a lot of people don't realize it varies a lot every brand depending on their size is going to have a different kind of budget and so for me as an influencer when i first started out i had no idea what i should be charging brands i was saying yes to like 300 dollars sponsorships because i was like okay i'm making money like this is good and so i had no idea what i could be charging i had no idea what my worth was and this is something that's usually a huge issue for a lot of influencers when you're first starting out and you're first starting to monetize you have no idea what to charge because there's no industry standard there's no one really talking about what they're charging and the reason for that is is because again as an influencer for me my brand deals vary depending on the brand depending on how much i want to work with them and depending on what their budget looks like i can charge a very a different rate for different brands i know for me when i first started out i was doing brand deals where i was just getting free stuff in exchange for posting content and that's kind of like the name of the game you have to kind of work your way up to eventually getting these high paying brand deals you know if you're lucky maybe you blow up like one day overnight and suddenly brands are paying you tens of thousands of dollars for deals like that would be amazing but usually for people when they're kind of first starting to grow they're saying yes to lower things but it's really important to keep in mind that your audience size is not always going to equate to how much money you're getting paid. Brands are more concerned with your engagement rate. So how many views are you getting on each video? So if you have a million subscribers and every single one of your videos is getting 2000 views, brands are not going to wanna pay you 
a lot of money. And typically what happens, and this is something that I really wanna touch on because I think it's really important for people to recognize when they're first starting to grow their channels. When you're first starting to grow as a content creator, what happens with almost every person is your content will pop, some of your content will go viral, and your, your platforms will start growing at these really accelerated rates. You're doing really well, you're getting a lot of new followers and subscribers, your engagement's really high, but you may also have periods where that's not really happening as much and things are leveling out a little bit. So for me, when I first started out doing this, like when I was still working at Amazon, some of my AdSense paychecks were like $7,000. And I was like, oh my God, like if I'm making this every single month, like I'm straight, that on top of brand deals, like I'm chilling. But eventually again, growth slows down. You're not always gonna have viral videos. And eventually got to a point where it's like, there were some months where my AdSense checks were like, 2000 a thousand two thousand dollars so now i'm at a place where it's like my ads and checks are like four or five thousand which is pretty nice but it varies it changes while making content is very lucrative i think it's really important to remember that you're not going to be making the same amount of money every single month because your payout is going to be determined not only by your engagement your views but also how many brand deals you have and there's going to be certain periods in the year where maybe brands are not doing as many campaigns. Maybe there's gonna be slower seasons. There's gonna be higher seasons. So like around the holidays, you're probably gonna have a lot of brand deals. There's different seasons. And so I just really encourage you to really keep that in mind when you first start making money as a content creator. I think most people know this by now, but I just really want to kind of point that out because I think as you're first starting to grow, numbers can look really exciting and really good, but that's not always going to be the long-term payout that you get. Chasing viral videos every single week, every single month is not realistic. You're gonna burn yourself out. And that kind of leads me into my next point, that I think a lot of people do not talk about enough when it comes to content. At the end of the day, your payout is going to be directly affected by how much you are posting. When you are posting a lot, you have a higher chance of going viral. The algorithm likes you better on TikTok, on YouTube, on everything. But also you have more room to make more money from brands. You're increasing the volume of sponsorships in which you are participating in. And so for me, when I first started out, I was really committed to being as consistent as possible because I recognized that I could easily quit my job if I'm posting two videos a week. I think that I went into this thinking that that was going to be sustainable long-term, and it's not. Content creation, although it seems easy from the outside looking in, putting yourself on camera, having the energy to film yourself, figuring out even what you're gonna be posting, right? Editing, like all that stuff, it takes time, it takes energy. For me, if you guys watched my chit chat video from a few days ago, like I had a kind of a rough year in 2022. And I didn't always have the energy to be on camera and that's very natural. We're human beings, we are not robots and although I love this job and I will always want want to do it and continue doing it. I never want to seem ungrateful for this job and for this life because I love it. Um, but at the end of the day, it can be tiring. So I think I made the mistake of putting myself in a position where I was really relying again on those high volume of brand deals. I was saying yes to pretty low rates when I was first starting out as a full-time content creator. But at the end of the day, you really have to be selective on who you're working with. You want to get to a point where you're able to say no to a lot of brand deals and really only say yes to things that are within your you know realm of what you want to be getting paid and while consistency is an amazing goal to have um i think that you want to be thinking long term and you want to be thinking about yourself and your energy and you want to be thinking about ways in which you can be making money outside of brand deals so that you don't have to be relying on brand deals to pay you out the amount that you want to get paid. If I could go back in time and tell myself one thing when I was starting out this as a full-time job, I would tell myself, Lynette, you do not want brand deals to, to be your only and main source of income. Almost from the, like, the start of your content creation career, be thinking about other ways in which you can make money outside of just content paying you. So outside of just brand deals, outside of just AdSense, because you do not want to trap yourself in a place where you're relying on being staying relevant in order to pay your bills. It's stressful, it's anxiety inducing, and I know it seems like the whole point of wanting to be a, become a full-time content creator because it seems really easy, it seems really fun, but I'm telling you long-term, 
it's not something that I think like, okay, we're in a day and age now where so many people want to be content creators. And while I definitely believe that you can do this long term, you can be abundantly successful in this, you can be provided and taken care of. I'm at a place where I'm doing it. Again, that's how I'm making a majority of my money. But again, you're going to have periods where you're growing really fast and then it slows down. Things change in this industry very, very quickly. Be thinking about other, you know, business ideas that you have, other ways that you want to monetize. Maybe you want to really build out your affiliate marketing, um, you know, income stream. That's something that I see a lot of influencers do very well. And I've seen some influencers um, build that out to a point where they're making more money from affiliate marketing than they are brand deals. And that's amazing. There's so many platforms out there for you to learn how to like leverage your online presence that you maybe already have to make more money. One really great way that you can do this is using Squarespace. Squarespace is literally the one-stop shop for you to build an online presence and really take advantage of your online presence to again, build a business on top of that. Like I said, for me, I made some passive income with an ebook that I launched back in 2021 and I'm still making money from it to this day. And I was able to launch that so easily by making a website on Squarespace. So I highly recommend you guys check them out. They have so many tools to make, again, building an online presence super easy. They have amazing templates. They have really easy payment features that you can set up that I personally use. And they even have marketing tools and analytics that make it really easy, again, if you wanna launch a product or even just start like an email list or whatever. Um, they make it really, really easy to do it on their website. So I will leave a link to them down below if you guys wanna check them out and get a discount. But yeah, like I said, there's so many different ways to invest your money to grow and like utilize your online presence to start a brand and launch different things just so you're not really relying on brands to pay you out because also like be thinking about like the fact that like okay a lot of us want to be content creators so we can get out of like the nine to five so we can like feel like we have freedom over our time and our schedule but again as a content creator it's a lot more work than a lot of people think and when you're constantly relying on brands to pay you you're still answering the corporations to maintain your lifestyle, to pay your bills. You're still having due dates, you're still having deadlines. So although that can feel like a lot of freedom when you're coming from a nine to five, it can actually end up still feeling very limiting. And I don't think that I realized that when I was first starting out. I was like just so excited to get out of the nine to five and get out of the job that I hated because I just hated my job that I was like, oh, I, I don't care. Like I just wanna be a content creator, but like it's still a lot of work. Being a content creator does not equate to financial freedom unless you are investing your money, you're being smart with your money, right? And that's something that I personally, honestly, am not prioritized enough and I wish that I would have. And also that kind of leads me to my next point. A lot of content creators, I would say <laughs> like most influencers, we are getting rewarded for showing off a certain kind of lifestyle. A lot of influencers have really nice apartments and condos and clothes and they go on trips and they're doing all these things that are very nice. And that's because we are rewarded for doing that. So typically what happens for a lot of content creators is as they're starting to make more money, you're increasing your expenses to try to maintain a certain lifestyle. And again, this is something that I fell into and I'm being really real with you guys. So I think it's really important to keep in mind that like this is, this happens to so many people. And luckily like I, I'm, I've always been good enough about managing my money to where I'm not like gonna ever put myself in debt. Like I, I'm good, right? I have a lot of money in the bank, like I'm fine. But I definitely had a lifestyle creep when I started making more money from content. I don't know, I'm very abundance mindset um, when it comes to everything. Like you should be enjoying your life, living your life. Like the world could end in a few years. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm a big believer in like, go out, live your life, have fun. I just wish I would have realized like when I first started making money as a content creator that again, when your expenses are increasing, like for example, I pay a lot of money in rent to live in this um, like condo and it's really nice and I really enjoy it. But when your expenses increase, again, that adds more pressure for you to constantly be posting and to be constantly, you know, like being relevant. That adds more pressure for you to, again, rely more on these brand deals, rely more on posting a lot in order to maintain your lifestyle. And you don't want to get caught in that trap because it can actually be very stressful. And I think the goal you know, when you're really thinking about building wealth and long-term, like getting to financial freedom, you don't wanna be relying on exchanging your time and exchanging your energy 
for money. Once you start making more money it, with anything, really, truly, like, yes, invest in yourself, you know, spend money on the things that you want. Like, maybe you're really into luxury clothes. Maybe you're really into traveling. You know, for me, like, I was really into traveling and having, like, really nice trip experiences. You know, really figure out, like, what you want to spend your money on, what you really enjoy, but do not get into a place where you are having such a lifestyle creep to a point where you have to be working yourself to the point of burnout to maintain your lifestyle. Because again, when you go from doing content for fun as a side project to doing it as a full-time job to where that is the thing paying your bills, your relationship with that thing is going to change a little bit. And again, while I still am in love with making videos, I still love doing this. Like I'm never gonna stop doing it even as I'm doing other things. Um, you just, you don't wanna have an unhealthy relationship with the thing that you, right now currently have a really good relationship with. So that's why I really say my main pieces of advice as you start making money from content creation and pursue it as a full-time career is to not increase your lifestyle expenses too much. Do not rely on brand deals as your main source of income. Again, be thinking about other ways in which you can make money. Be always thinking about building other streams of income invest your money lastly really do what you can to maintain a positive and healthy relationship with social media and with content creation because again if it's something that you really love right now you don't want that relationship to change and to get bitter and to get weird when you're thinking about just the nature of being a content creator your job is to be relevant like at the end of the day like i love you know sharing my truth, being my authentic self, connecting with you guys, but there is still a lot of back end business logical thinking that I have to do to make sure that my videos get views, to make sure that you guys want to click them, to make sure that, you know, brands want to work with me. So it's really important as you're growing as a content creator, as you're, you know, first even starting to monetize with this, it's really important that you are protecting that relationship that you have with this job as much as you possibly can because it can be such a beautiful thing to connect with people to build a community to express yourself online and learn to be okay with not giving a fuck about what other people think like i love this job so much i think there's so much beauty that comes with being a content creator but it can be very easy for that relationship to sour um if you do not protect that relationship well enough and if you do not protect your energy well enough as well so i really really encourage you be thinking about that in the back of your head as you are pursuing this as you're starting to grow as you're starting to make more money um because these things are things that i wish i would have kind of just thought more about a little bit um when i was starting out so hopefully this was helpful in some way you guys i just really want to be real and raw in this video i don't want it to come across like i'm complaining at all like th again there's so much positive that comes out of this job and for me this journey has been overwhelmingly positive um but i just wanted to be real about like this the sides of this that not everyone kind of talks about because we do glamorize it quite a bit i really don't think that content creation is for everyone and there's a lot of people who want to do it i really encourage you try it see if it's for you but if it's not vibing like if you're not vibing with it if you don't feel good doing this like you know it takes time to warm up, warm up to a camera it takes time to get used to this um but if you're really recognizing like within yourself like it's not for you then really truly honor that and you know think about some other ways in which you can make money and achieve financial freedom so yeah hopefully this was helpful you guys let me know in the comments down below if you guys have any questions at all i will definitely continue making videos on this stuff i love talking about like finance business as i'm on this kind of journey of like trying to build out new streams of income and stuff like i really want to share that journey with you guys so yeah, just let me know if you guys want to see anything else on this channel. And yeah, I hope you guys are having an amazing week. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.